Hey, what's up, guys? It's Chris here from Mixdown Online. And today, I want to talk to you about file management in Cubase. All right, so again, share and like this video. And if you're new here on this channel, feel free to subscribe by clicking the subscribe button below and hit that notification bell so every time I upload a video, you'll be notified. All right, so now file management. So why talking about file management? This is something, in my opinion, that is very important. Uh, just to stay organized when working music production, whether it's in Cubase or Studio One, Pro Tools, Logic, whatever DAW you're working with, it is important that you figure out how the file management of that particular DAW works. Um, so let's jump into Cubase. Now, if I open a new project, in Cubase. Usually what we get is the Steinberg Hub. And uh, let's just briefly open a empty uh, project. And um, when you install Cubase, by default, Cubase will, uh, will have the use default location selected. And I would advise you to check the prompt for project location, okay? So you decide where you want to work and where you want to save your session. So if I click on create, I'm going to get that set project folder window. And this is where I'm going to select um, a, a place on my hard drive to, uh, to save my project. So let's say I save it here and I create a new project and call it a new folder actually and call it test two. That could actually be the project folder of the entire album. So let's say I'm working on an EP or an album. I'm going to call that folder album. And then I'm going to create within that album folder, I'm going to create another folder called song one. So basically the title of the song. And each songs will have its own project folder. Okay, I'm going to explain you why. Um, so if I click on OK, and I just going to go directly on that folder. So I have album and then I have song one. So uh, right off the bat, Cubase will create a audio folder. Okay. That is empty at the moment, but this is where Cubase will save all the audio that you're going to record in your project. It's going to use that audio folder to store all the audio content of your project. Now I'm going to go back on my empty project. I'm just going to first save it and then call it save one. Okay, well, let's do that again. And then if I go back to my folder, I have my CPR file, which is the project Cubase file. Okay, so if I wanna save my session on another uh, hard drive, okay, somewhere else on my computer, um, you would probably have the reflex of, you know, just clicking on file and save as and choose another location. But the problem is if you do so, that CPR file will still be linked to that audio folder. So you need to move the entire folder if you want to save that one project. If I would to save that one, I would actually, you know what, let me go back here. I have that song here breaking me down um, and I actually made a copy. So I basically what I did, I just copied that folder and I just, just for the, uh, an example for the tutorial, I just copied it right here, okay, on another location on the same drive, uh, just by clicking copy and paste, and that's it. In, in this case, if I would have more than one song on this album folder, and I would like to, to back up the entire album, or only move it somewhere else, I would just copy the entire folder um, that includes all the songs within that folder and copy that somewhere else. Um, that would be a very simple way to do it. Um, so first, make sure the uh, you're saving one project per song. Okay, so each songs you're working with has its own audio folder, and that that audio folder is not shared between several CPR files. Okay, several project files. Okay, let's open that project here. Okay, I'm gonna open my. Uh, yeah, this one, okay, it's right here. And I have like a bunch of files here that I recorded. And uh, if you wanna get access, you wanna get access to the audio content of um, that project, within Cubase, you have to open the pool. So Cubase has the pool within the software that you can get access to by clicking on Control P. And this is gonna open the pool, or you can find it uh, below project and pool. 
okay? Um, and I have uh, within the pool all the content found in the audio folder, okay? And you can check on the right side, you have the path column here where you can confirm that all the files are saved within the correct folder on your hard drive, okay? So everything is at the same, at the right place right here. So we're pretty good here. Um, we have the tempo of these files. We have uh, the sample rate, the bit rate. If the file is mono or stereo, everything is listed in the pool. So it is a very, very efficient way to get access to the audio files within your project. So let's go and look at what the pool has to offer and how I work with the pool on my side. And then I'm gonna show you why I think it's important to save one project folder per song, okay? Okay, now we have all the audio of our project saved in that folder, okay? Now Cubase created the sample track folder um, because I, I work with the sample track um, and that was created by default, but you can also create yourself some folders if you want, just by right clicking and click on create folder and you can call that whatever you want. So if you want to organize all of your uh, audio files within the pool, you can do so. So let's say I want to call one of the uh, folders drums. I can just drag all of my drum audio in that folder if I want to, if I want to do so. This is not something I do on my side, okay, but that can be done. Um, if you want, you can also, by right clicking on audio on top, you can uh, import or export the pool content. Again, this is not something I usually do, but that can be practical in some specific situations. Let's say you're working on a um, specific project that requires you to, uh, to load the same audio files um, on several projects before starting to record. You can export the pool from the first project and then every time you start a new project, you go into the pool and you import the uh, these files into the into the new project so that can be useful in this case um but again this is not something that is useful for me but it's pretty cool that you can have access to it now if we look at the project here let's say if i was working or i was editing some stuff and by mistake i deleted that event and I realized after a while that, oh, I'm missing a file, I'm missing an event here. What happened to Electric Guitar 6? So I'm just going to go back in my pool and look for Elec 6, um, if I know the specific name of that file. So uh, let's look, oh, there it is. It's right on top. So I can right click by select and, and make sure my track here is selected. Right click on Elect 6 and then insert it into the project. So I can choose at cursor, at left locator, or at origin. So if I select at origin, and I go back, there you go. I have my full original event. And it's back and it's synced and everything is as it was before. So this is can be practical. I use that quite a few times, um, honestly. And then uh, you can also, if you want to, and this is not something I usually do, but you could um, add some effects directly on that wave, directly in the pool. So by right clicking and again, go into uh, plugins or processes and, you know, just add some pitch shift to a, a wave or a phase reverse or whatever effect you want to you want to apply directly on the wave you can do it in the pool if you if you need to so this is basically what the pool has to offer it's it works in the background while you're working so it's always there um, and it stores all of the audio of uh, your session. Now, at some point, I like to do a cleanup because, you know, you record some stuff, you record over some events, you delete some events, and then you do some several takes and stuff. And in the end, when you're happy with what you have, um, it's always good, in my opinion, to do a cleanup just to stay organized, okay, and to save some space on the hard drive as well. I don't like to to waste any space on my drives. So um, what I do here in the pool is... I right click on audio or anywhere and you can just uh, click on remove unused media. So uh, Cubase will know uh, all the media that is used within your project and will remove all the media, all the files that you're not using in the project. And uh, you can just select trash. And by selecting trash, all the unused media is gonna be listed 
down in the trashed folder. And then if I want to get rid of all of these files, I right click and I click on empty trash. But first, I always make sure that the path is okay, just to make sure I'm not deleting uh, some files that uh, were stored elsewhere. And then I just make sure I really don't need these files. And once I'm ready to, uh, to delete the trash, I just right click and empty trash. And then I click on erase. And they're gone forever. That's it. And now I'm going to get to why it is important, in my opinion, to uh, save one project and create one project per song. Okay. Um, and this is the reason why. So let's say I'm using the same project for several songs. Okay. Um, so when I'm ready to work on song number two, I'm just going to go on file and save as, name it to song number two or whatever the title is. And uh, there you go. I'm good to go. I'm good to uh, erase whatever is in the, uh, the project and uh, start over with a new song. But the problem is I'm using the same audio folder. Okay, so if you have several songs in the same project that are using the same audio folder, what's going to happen is every time you're going to record some audio uh, on the new song, all the audio will be stored in the same audio folder. And if by mistake you decide to do a cleanup like we just did on one song, the next time you'll open the second song, uh, you're going to be stuck with this type of message. So if by mistake with one song you delete all the um, uh, all the unused media out of the pool and then you empty the trash when you're going to open song two that is sharing the same audio folder, you're going to be stuck with that message and all of your files are going to be lost. Okay, so this is something you need to pay attention to. So make sure you create one project for every song. OK, um, now, if you want to back up your stuff, I told you earlier that you can just copy the folder or something else you can do to back up one session. OK, you can just uh, click on file, backup project and select another location. Let's create a new one here. Test two and I'm going to save it right here. I'm going to move it there and I'm going to click on OK. And then it's going to show me the backup project options. And I'm going to name that new project uh, song, I don't know, three. Okay, and uh, remove unused files. So I can also remove all the unused files. And so, so this way, Cubase will create a cleaner version of uh, that project. And when you're ready, you click on OK. It's going to copy all the files, all the audio folder content. The pool is going to be moved. It's going to be copied to the new location. And so this is a very good way, an efficient way to do a backup or to move your project. OK, uh, this is good for one project. If you want to move several projects, uh, like several songs uh, within the same album folder, I just move the entire folder. That's it. If doing so, the only thing you're going to you're going to get as a message when opening a new uh, a new CPR out of the new location is this message. Cubase will tell you that the project has been moved. Okay. And just going to confirm with you that you want to use the new location and you just click on new and then you're going to get to your project and that's it. You're only going to see that message once. The first time you're going to open the project on the new location. That's it. All right, guys. So if you have any questions or comments, please leave everything down below and don't forget to share and to like. And if you're new here on this channel, subscribe and hit that notification bell. All right, guys, talk to you soon.